Hello there, Monday afternoon. It's uh, May the 25th, 2020, and I have some great news to share with you. Uh, this, or yesterday, our leadership team met once again, as we've been doing regularly, to pray for our church and to stay updated on things. We met specifically to discuss when we should open our doors for in-person worship gatherings. Yesterday, the decision was made. We should open on June the 7th. We'll welcome those of you who are ready, itching to be together physically for our worship times. And that'll happen two weeks from yesterday. Uh, that's not for everybody. Some people are gonna continue to stay at home. And for those of you who are at risk individuals uh, who have compromised immune systems, who have respiratory issues or diabetes, those who are most at risk for serious complications from COVID-19, please continue to stay at home. Uh, we'll be broadcasting live as we have been doing these past weeks. We also encourage our older members to stay at home. And there are others who will simply choose uh, just for their, own, uh, for their own sake that they feel like it's best to stay at home for the foreseeable future. Uh, we, we are one body and we're not gonna be divided during this time, even if physically we're not all together. We're gonna continue to work to provide that fellowship, that nourishment for one another as we seek to live out the mission of God. So I just wanna briefly update you on what that's gonna look like for those of you who are planning to be here on June 7th or some following Sunday. There's gonna be some different things that you need to know about. The first of those is that our worship gathering will be somewhat different. It will not be the same as you've been accustomed to for the main reason that we're not just simply having a service for those who are physically present. We'll also be focused on broadcasting to those who are virtually present. We're gonna to continue to meet at 10 o'clock. We'll keep our service to just about an hour. We'll have the disposable communion packets. We will not pass collection trays. There will be no donuts and coffee. There will be no classes. There will be no nursery. Sounds like I'm saying a bunch of no's. But keep your eye focused on the positive for those of you who wanna be here, that we are gonna be opening the doors on June the 7th. We'll also be screening folks as you arrive at the end of the sidewalk, uh, as you come from the parking lot. There'll be a couple people there with clipboards. They will ask you a couple of very simple questions. Uh, are you sick? Um, do you feel well? Um, do you have a fever? The basic things that really you should know to stay home anyway, if you're you know, one of those categories. They're gonna also record your name because we wanna make sure that if by chance, by some sad fact that someone who was present turns out a couple days later to test positive for coronavirus, we wanna know who was here so we can contact everyone and let them know they may have been exposed. So I think that'll actually be kind of fun. I want to view that as kind of fun rather than a tedious aspect. Please don't try to you know, go around the side door. Just enjoy the aspect of being together. That's what's most crucial. The good news is we're together. We're also asking that everyone wear a mask for our worship gathering. There's some bad information out there about masks. Remember, we have a, a doctor, a medical doctor, who's one of our elders. Um, this decision to wear a mask is not simply because the governor's commission is, is advising it for gatherings. It's not a political statement of any kind. This is simply because we want to love our brothers and sisters. Masks don't actually protect me very well from disease. This kind of mask, at least, uh, which with cats certainly shouldn't protect many people from anything, honestly. But regardless, um, masks, really what they do is they prevent an individual who doesn't realize they have the disease from spreading the germs. They're about 90% effective at preventing the spread of germs. And so the last thing we would want is for somebody to come thinking, oh yeah, I'm totally fine. And then to find out two or three days later that without wearing a mask, they exposed a bunch of people to the virus. So out of love for neighbor, out of love for brother and sister, we need to wear masks when we're together, at least uh, for some period of time. Uh, families who live together in a household may certainly sit together while you're here, but others should remain socially distant of about six feet during our gathering. We'll meet, as I said, um, for about an hour. And so I look forward to that time together. We will do everything we can to make it a very uplifting and encouraging time, whether you're here physically or whether you're here virtually. Look, I know not everyone has the same opinion about the seriousness of this disease outbreak. What's important at this season is not for us to all think alike, but it's important that we remember we are one church, we're one body. God is calling us to do a work together. And we should remember if we have strong opinions about one way or the other that 
We need to take this. Some, some people will think we're being premature by meeting. Some people will think we've waited way too long to meet. Regardless of your opinion, this is not a time to come and to share divisive opinions with one another. Romans 14, Paul clearly says that you're allowed to have convictions between you and the Lord. But be very careful that your own good conviction doesn't become evil for someone else. Because when we are inconsiderate in sharing our convictions, we can really be harmful to others. And so his closing statement there in, this, in that chapter was, So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. It's okay to have convictions. But let's not come and share those convictions with one another here as we gather. Our leadership team has met together. We've decided to open the doors. And we've decided on what we think are some best practices for this gathering to allow this to continue, to allow us to be encouraged by this gathering. And so it's very simple just to follow these simple things that we're putting in place. Just come and be together. And for those who need to stay home, stay at home and still be together. It's so good to be a part of this church family. I'm excited about where God is leading us. And I pray that together, uh, whether it's on June 7th or December 7th or whenever it is, we're next all together, that we continue to focus on what God is putting out before us, the things that are so good that are in our future. May God bless you. Have a good day and a great week. And thanks so much for tuning in.